Hi guys, this is pre-algebra lesson 3-1, connecting ratios, rates, and unit rates. In this lesson, you will use ratio concepts and reasoning to solve multi-step problems. You will also use ratios and rates to describe the relationship between two quantities, and you will find equivalent ratios and use unit rates to solve multi-step problems. And you should be able to tell how to use ratio concepts and reasoning to solve multi-step problems. All right, let's look at explain it. In a basketball contest, Elizabeth made nine out of 25 free throw attempts. Alex made eight out of 20 free throw attempts. Jenny said that Elizabeth had a better free throw record because she made more free throws than Alex. Is this argument valid? Is this true? So notice that they have different numbers of um, total attempt, attempted, right? Um, and just looking at how much they made, it looks like Elizabeth made more uh, out of the free throws, but she tried more. So is this really valid? Part A, do you agree with Jan, Janice's reasoning, Janie's reasoning? Why or why not? How do you compare them, right? So you can say Elizabeth, for Elizabeth, she made nine out of 25 throws. And so in percentage, what's, what's the decimal? 0.36, so percentage-wise, that's 36% of what she threw. What about Alex? She made eight out of 23 throws. So percentage-wise is four, 0 0.4, so that's 40%. So it's four, and 40 is bigger than 36, so you can say Alex has more chance. She, he got in more proportionally right um decide who has a better throw record justify your reasoning using mathematical arguments so for a you're gonna say no because each number basket is made is out of a different number right in order to be fair they need to compare from the same number of um, free throw. Okay, so decide who had a better throw record. Alex, because, well, that was our work, because 8 out of 20 is equal to 0 0.4, which is 40%, and Elizabeth is 9 over 25, which is 0 0.36, and that's 36%. And 40% is greater than 36%. Okay. Let's look at focus on math practices. What mathematical model did you use to justify your reasoning? Are there other models you could use to represent the situation? What did what did you use? We used fractions, proportions, equivalent ratios, right? To represent the situation, compare the ratios. You could also use an equation to find equivalent ratios, um, but we just used equivalent ratios and the um, ratio, uh, the proportions, right? So you can say I used tables, or if you didn't use tables, you can just say I used equivalent. Um, I used proportions. And percentages to represent the situation 
and compare the ratios and percentages. Okay, so explain what you did. All right, so in this lesson, think about how ratios, rates, and unit rates are used to solve problems. Example one, we're going to find unit rates. Do you remember unit rates? They're rates, but they need to be in one unit. So your denominator should be one unit. How many of this is for one of this, right? So you're thinking about one. Nathan and Dan were both hired as lifeguards for the summer. They received their paychecks for the first week. Who earns more per hour? So Dan worked nine hours and he got $78.75. Nathan worked five hours and he got 46.25. Do they have the same unit rate, which means how much they earn per hour? Right? So you can use a unit rate to compare who earned more per hour. So you can draw a model or a table to represent equivalent ratios. In order to have five become one, you divide it by five, right? You know how to make equivalent ratios. So you're going to divide 46.25 by five, and that's 9.25. What about nine to one? You divide by nine, and then if you divide 78.75 by nine, you get 8.75. So Dan, Dan earns $9.25 per hour. And what's the other guy's name? Um, Nathan earns $8.75 per hour. Who earns more per hour? Dan. Wait. Oh, we got Nathan's first. I'm sorry. So that's Nathan's, and this is Dan's. So Nathan earns five, about 50 uh, cents more per hour. Okay. Maybe he has more training. That's why he earns a little bit more, even if they're both lifeguards. So let's look at this try question. Jennifer is a lifeguard at the same pool. She earns 137.25 for 15 hours of lifeguarding. How much does she earn per hour? What is her unit rate? So you have 137.25 dollars per 15 hours for her. So in order to get one hour, you're dividing 15 by 15. So you have to divide 137.25 by 15 as well. What do you get? 9.15 so she earns 9.15 dollars per hour and that's more than um more than dan but less than nathan so she's right in the middle what do you notice about the models used to find how much it, each lifeguard earns per hour what do you notice these diagrams represent how to come how to get equivalent ratios and they're used to represent the earnings of each lifeguard the equations represent equivalent ratios each can be used to represent any rate situations so all the equations represent equivalent ratios each can be used to represent any rate situation. Okay. All right, let's look at example two using unit rates. Ryan agrees to watch his neighbor's dogs for seven days. His neighbor provided a 128 ounce bag of dog food. Does Brian have enough food to feed the dogs all seven days? Explain. Okay, so he's gonna watch his neighbor's dogs for seven days. 
And then um, he got 128 ounce bag of a dog food. Um, is it enough, right? Uh, so it looks like we have two dogs. We're gonna use unit rates to find how much each dog eats in seven days. So for him, he, uh, Buster eats 20.5 ounces in two days. Roxy eats 22.5 ounces in three days. So in order to figure out how much they eat for seven days, first you need to figure out their unit rates, how much they eat per day. And Buster, Buster divide 20 by five and you get 10.25 ounces per day. Roxy divide this by three because it's three days, right? So then um, Roxy is gonna eat 7.5 ounces per day, okay? And so if you multiply this by seven, you get how much they eat for seven days. For Bustler, you multiply that by seven, 71.75 ounces per seven days. And Roxy eats 52.5 ounces for seven days total. So if you add them together, 71.75 plus 52.5 is equal to 120. 4.25 and 128 is bigger than 124.25. So it should be just enough for seven days. Brian has enough dog food. If he didn't have enough of dog food, he probably should ask his neighbor to give him more dog food. Example three, compare using rates. Suppose that each jump covers the same distance for this rabbit and kangaroo rat. It's not a kangaroo, it's a rat, okay? Um, how many jumps does, does it take each animal to cover the same distance? So now we want to see how many jumps would they make in order to get to a certain distance. So for a rabbit, uh, rabbit travels eight meters, for three jumps, right? And then kangaroo rat 12 meters for one, two, three, four, five jumps, right? So then you need to figure out the unit rate. Divide this by three and you get one jump. How, how many meters does rabbit go in one jump? Or how much uh, does kangaroo rat go in one jump? Or you can look at their LCM, right? Um, if you figure out how much they go in one jump, then you will get a decimal for this uh, problem, right? So you don't want to get a unit rate in order to solve this in an easier way. Um, you can, however, uh, look at the meters because we want to see the same distance. So eight and 12, if they keep multiplying eight and 12, all right, um, what would be the same distance? The first same distance, right? Um, so you can make a table for rabbit. If he uh, jumps three more jumps, he would go 16 meters. If he jumps three more jumps from there, he would go 24 meters. Kangaroo rat, if he jumps one more five jumps, he would go 24 jumps and we have the same meter now, right? And then we can say, oh, for a rabbit, he just needs to jump nine times. Kangaroo rat just needs to jump 10 times to jump the same distance, which is 24 meters. All right, so we're, we're doing the same things. We're looking at proportions and unit rates, um, but we want to think about what is our end goal? Do we want the same distance or do we want the unit rate? Do we want to figure out the total cost, right? So we need to figure out what information you might need. Let's look at this try question. A kitchen sink faucet streams 0.5 gallon of water in 10 seconds. That is your unit rate, your, um, your rate, not a unit rate. 0.5 gallons per 10 seconds, right? And then bathroom sink faucet streams 0 
gallons of water in 18 seconds. That is S. This is S. Okay. Which faucet will fill a three gallon container faster? So you want to fit this into three gallon in order to see how much seconds each, um, each faucet uh, needs for three gallons, you set an equivalent expression. 0 0.5 needs to be three gallons and 0 0.75 needs to be three gallons. In order to write equivalent expressions, you need to figure out how much times you're multiplying each denominator and the numerator, right? 0 0.5 times two, four, six would be three gallons, right? 0 0.5, times two is one gallon. So you have three of them. All right, so you multiply 10 by six and you get 60 seconds. What about 0 0.75 to three? 0 0.75 times two is 1.5. So if you have four 0 0.75s, you have three gallons, okay? So then you're multiplying it by four. 18 times four would be 64, right? Wait, 74, yeah, 74 seconds. So 72 seconds, I'm sorry. Because four times eight is 32, 72 seconds, okay? So the kitchen sink faucet, will take 60 seconds. Um, bathroom sink faucet will take 72 seconds. So which is faster? The less seconds you have would be faster, right? It fills up faster. In 60 seconds, 60 seconds is smaller than 72. So which one is faster? The kitchen sink, that's the kitchen sink, right? So you can say, the kitchen, the kitchen sink will fill a three gallon container in 60 seconds. And the bathroom sink will fill it in 72 seconds, the same container. So the kitchen sink is faster. Okay. So that was our first lesson of topic three. Let's summarize our lesson. In this lesson, we learned how to use equivalent ratios and rates including unit rates to, to compare ratios and solve problems. So make sure how to write unit rates and compare them. All right, that was lesson one. We'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.